Hello everyone, welcome back to Silver Tears Tarot and welcome to today's reading. We're actually going to get in and do that second half of the month, um, the refresh, the energy refresh for the month of June. So we got in the beginning of June, we did our read of the general information and just kind of saw that there was passion and emotion opening up. We've definitely seen that happening. So I think at this point, we just kind of jump in and see how things are going, if we're still expecting the same things, or if there's a different kind of energy that's starting to brew up here for you across the second half of the month of June. So it will be a general reading for this collective, as it always is. Um, it won't resonate with everyone. And of course, it shouldn't resonate with everyone. But if it does resonate with you, then by all means, um, think about subscribing, hit like, look at some of the other videos, get yourself all caught up. I'm going to read for you today with the Constellation Tarot. So this is one of my very favorite uh, tarot decks, the Constellation Tarot. Then we've got the Mystic Mondays. These two work really well together. And then the Moonology Oracle will be the Oracle of the Day when we get to that, um, whether I decide to extend this one or not, it'll be at the end of the reading, whether it's the YouTube reading or the extended. So um, I think I'm going to start with Constellations and then clarify with Mystic Mondays. So starting out, we're just looking at that overall energy across the second half of the month. And this is going to be that energetic and emotional backdrop across the second half of the month. There was a tendency to want to hold back. Yeah, this is defensiveness. There was a tendency to want to hold back um, on emotion that came out in the beginning. Oh, we have two things. So here's the emotion. Here's the Knight of Wands. Uh, okay, well, you know what? It's not inconsistent with what we saw. It's inconsistent because <laughs> it's inconsistent energy. It's inconsistent. It's a little bit defensive. It's holding back emotion, but it's being, being bathed in the emotion. So we saw um, that there was... There was going to be a lot of passion and emotion that was kind of opening up for this divine masculine in a matter of not quite like your divine masculine couldn't quite figure out how to be in this energy. And there was this kind of like what you're having now, this feeling of the noise in the background, that static energy in the background. It was a little bit more haphazard the last time when it happened at the, a couple weeks ago at the beginning of the month, but I feel it kind of coming back again here. Um, these last, the, probably the last day or so, you know, probably uh, over the last couple days. But it has a lot to do with that passion and not quite knowing what to do with it. The emotion coming up and we see a lot of that emotion here. Some of it feels like they're dealing with it kind of for the first time, but their response is really the same old response. So they kind of have a tendency to want to try and exert control over it and they are not super consistent in their behavior. So you'll see some defensiveness from them and some holding back in the emotion. Um, it doesn't even feel like it's to be taken seriously in most cases. And it really isn't. It really isn't. This is just kind of the um, the emotional backdrop. You may notice yourself doing this. Um, maybe not outright ghosting someone, but taking more time to respond because and not being able to make it go any faster for yourself. Um not being able to become more attentive to the conversation, but not necessarily meaning anything bad by it. We've got the two of wands here. Do we get the two? Ooh, yes, you get both twos. Two of wands, two of swords. Um, with the two of wands, this is, we've been seeing this one a lot. This has to do with getting closer and closer to that new set of priorities, that new set of values that your person is working towards, and also an important decision that needs to be made. So we know that they have not been doing a great job with making a decision here, but it has a lot to do with not being able to really take in the truth that has been coming their direction. In order for them to take that truth in, I think they're going to have to make a little bit more progress on refinding those values or re redefining those values. It's probably a better way to put it. Um, but we've got the world here, um, something that isn't done. So there's Remember we had that sense, and I don't know if you guys remember what happened in the June reading at the beginning of the month. Um, the monthly readings stick out for me because then I kind of evaluate everything against them. Um, but this one had a lot to making up for. It, it was, there was a missed opportunity and wanting to kind of make up for lost time. And part of it was I've got to fix this. I've got to fix something before 
it's too late and before they forget who I am, before too many time, before my, too many weeks have passed, years have passed, whatever it is. Because in some of these cases, we are talking years. Um, and wanting to fix it before too much time has passed. And this has been in the back of their mind kind of the whole time. All right. So we've got an Eight of Wands and a Queen of Wands. The Eight of Wands is sideways. This is about them having to make this decision and having to get to a place where they actually can make the decision. So with the Two of Swords in the upright, I feel like there's a little bit of hope around them um, being able to make this decision or pick a direction to go in. But with this defensiveness here, that works against them. The Queen of Wands, though, has them um, <clears throat> very aware of what they're doing. And that's something that we have seen quite a bit. We've seen them judging, ju sorry, judging themselves harshly, um, but definitely having the awareness of what they're doing, why they're doing it. We've seen it, this has been something that's been coming up for some time, but every once in a while we see a little more of it. And so we've been seeing a little more of that ability to judge oneself. Now, the ability to move forward with the information that they receive is a whole different story. So remember we saw, um, and I was even talking yesterday about the sense of, stagnancy and I think I was talking about this in the extended which by the way um, yesterday is one of those extendeds that I will call out if you haven't seen it and there's a good information in there about kind of um, what to expect from your person as they're going through this difficult energy so they're lacking some information um, working through a bit of a transition and they've got some healing that they need to do before they make it um, to, to a place where they have these new values, you know. And we knew that something was coming up with the third party. There was a pretty extent, uh, intense extended that occurred yesterday that has a lot of detail to kind of talk through um, what ends up happening. But part of it was around this sense of stagnant energy and the fact that that is energy that they are bringing in by not making this decision and not responding to this truth immediately we saw that truth pretty much front and center um, in the extended reading and we also saw that the universe is holding them in a position where they have fewer choices about where to go and what to do so the stagnancy that they're holding themselves in is this this is about making the decision the um the situation where the universe is holding them in place that is um that's going to be a little bit different feel a little bit different and we also saw that that does release once they get the point um and at that point then are they going to move on or are they not because they had some of their own things to work through so again if you want the details around that um, check out yesterday's extended. I usually try to at least sum up the extended because I know not everybody's going to get them and some people are just never going to get them or they're going to get them rarely or you're going to wait for me to say, oh, you know what? That's, that's a good one to watch. So if you're one of those people who waits for that, yesterday's is a good one to watch. Um, there's a lot of good detail around what to expect and kind of what's driving it in them. And it's, it's helpful. Um, so this Two of Cups comes up in that extended, and it has been coming up here in the readings. And it's, sometimes it's a matter of like gravitating away from partnerships just in general. And we are talking about overall partnerships, not just the partnership with you, which is, of course, based on a special bond. So it's a special partnership. They have a partnership that's dissolving in that third party situation, whether this is work and all of a sudden things are irreparably changed or it could be something that's happening in their home life. But there's something that is really shifting in the uh, primary relationship here at work or at home or whatever that is. You have the Princess of Cups. This is where they start to get quiet and this is where you might want to start to just observe when you start to notice that energy falling away, the energy of the buzzing falling away. Theoretically, they should be going into a place now where they're gathering some additional wisdom and maybe getting better. I'm not convinced that's where they go because I think some of them are going to kind of curl up a little bit and and try to hide from the situation. There's a little bit of that element to it. And part of it is they don't understand why things are the way they are. Why does this situation with you, for example, continue to feel the way that it does? It just seems um, really extreme. And they're starting to really question it and just say, wait a minute, what gives? Why is it like this? Um, so on some level, they're aware of this bond that you share. But on many levels, they are going to do what they can to try not to think about it too much. Okay, so looking into the rest of June, um, 
Definitely, like I just said, trying not to think of the emotion too much. They've got this opening up of passion, emotion coming to them, but they can't quite figure out how to handle it, and they're trying to kind of hold back that emotion. They may not be able to do that. We've seen a lot of evidence of that. So even in um, when we go into yesterday's extended reading, there was the here they come kind of hurtling out of this situation with the third party in a pretty unstable, unbalanced way, but come in your way. It's that kind of thing, and you suddenly hear from them. There may be a little bit of them kind of, um, I'm not saying that they won't be happy to talk to you or that they haven't made some significant changes, but there's more to this situation. Um, so we've got this lack of perspective, the Capricornicus here in the reverse. It's like the hanged man. Um, we got this one yesterday as well. So that idea of not quite having the new perspective put together just yet. So the information coming to them, all the good truth in the world isn't necessarily going to help them out if they're not prepared to process that truth. And what they really aren't with that five of swords energy. And we saw um, yesterday that they were thinking they were going to attack something that is essentially devil energy, something that is very challenging. They're going to jump on it and go toe to toe with it. But the problem is they really kind of weren't ready to do that. That was one of the things that we saw. Part of the reason they're not ready to do that is because they're not ready to lose face. Um, so there was, there's a lot of that. I'm not quite sure about my options, wanting to make up for lost time, a lot of hesitation energy. And that hesitation energy is usually because of this, because they're like, wait, 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 what's going to happen if I do this? What does it look like if I do this? I'm, I'm not entirely certain about moving forward. And this is where we start to get into the overthinking and the consternation, the energy that basically brings us up to date with what we saw yesterday. So we are very much consistent with what we're seeing, but I'm curious to understand where it goes across the course of the month, because we still have a few days left. We know we're moving up to something that's probably a little bit bigger, at least in your world, if not with them also as we get closer to that summer solstice. Um, I think that energy is it's, it's glowing like a light at the end of the tunnel right now. Although I wouldn't say you're necessarily in a bad place. It's just this really beautiful light that um, I feel like this energy you're going to remember for a long time. Um, as they are moving up to it though, they're a little bit more reserved. They're a little bit more um, feeling like they're constricted or feeling like they're resistant overall. With this uh, lack of perspective, something out there doesn't let them loosen up. So I'm not talking about losing their inhibitions. I'm talking about like allowing themselves to not take things so seriously that frankly don't need to be taken that seriously. They do not have that lightheartedness about them right now because they haven't figured out the piece where they can allow their ego to just sort of take a little rest. They've got this right now. There's nothing to worry about. You know, that's maybe the truth of the situation and they may even understand that on an intellectual level but they're having a hard time getting into it so they're creating themselves they're creating in themselves this self-destructive behavior we've been seeing it in the readings we saw it across the month um, of June when we looked into that reading so again consistent with what we've been seeing but not necessarily um, we see them getting into it we don't necessarily see them coming up with answers and I just dropped some I've got to pick up as well so let's see what else we've got down there. Okay, something fell out face up. Knight of Wands in the reverse. So this is kind of what we've been hearing and what I'm not surprised by. With the Star card, this is where um, I almost feel the Lover's card in this a little bit. The Lover's... Um, but the reason that I think I don't is because of the prevalence of that ego energy. This is them really feeling the bond and feeling the path forward, but they may not recognize it as such and may not understand that the path forward involves them doing some healing. Um, the important thing to remember here is that the healing is all yours. The relationship between the two of you may belong to the two of you, but the healing um, that happens in it belongs to the individual for the time being until you are in some cases to come back together and kind of connect that healing up and connect it into a single um, a single place this for now the healing is up more on an individual level so there is some uh, there are definitely some walls to break down on the way there um, with the four of Pentacles this is something to to stop 
letting be like a, it's a hurdle or it's an obstacle that needs to not be an obstacle. This is letting something go that essentially it's like this ego piece. And I believe it is the ego piece for many of them, but I don't see them getting there yet. Their fear causes them to behave in this inconsistent way, which we saw that with the Knight of Wands over here, same inconsistent in and out breadcrumbing sort of behavior over here. Um, but we do see them jumping in. So before we decide that that's necessarily a good thing, I really like that devil in reverse. I was hoping that had a ring to it. I want to see it come back out, but I think I'm wishful thinking enough that I better just set it down and see what it does. I trust it'll come back out if it's supposed to, because we've seen that happen many times. Um, okay, so for the fool, though, they are willing to jump in. So remember... This is somebody who is, they feel that opening up of passion and that emotion and they want to hold it back, but they might not really be able to do so. Um, and we saw yesterday, like them catapulting your direction, basically coming up like a phoenix out of the, you know, you're being reborn. There is definitely that rebirth sort of energy, but a lot of the rebirth energy kind of held off until you had your response to them coming back. So you have your response, which we believe is supposed to be gentle um, but even if you um, you give them the most gentle response they're still having these things that are happening within them that they're they're going to have to work through some things um, what you do may not be how they perceive it let's see here what did I drop okay we've got one face down that was the only one that fell and we've got the ten of cups here in the reverse so the ten of cups in the reverse is kind of talking about how how they're going to respond when they come closer to you. Um, what This thing that fell face down, I need to see this because I feel like it's relevant. I don't usually find our cards face down, but I feel like this is where ultimately, this is ultimately where we're headed. Um, I don't know what that means. That puts a lot of pressure on this. Well, no, it's good. Um, so it's the sun. It is ultimately moving in a direction of happiness, which is significant because we got the star card over here. Not just because the sun is a star, but because the star talks about moving in the right direction. The sun talks about turning your ship into the happiness. So it isn't necessarily here. You're in happiness. It's about moving toward happiness and a trajectory that generally moves toward happiness so it is more of a something that can be maintained because it's something that you can touch on more often happiness is a temporary experience you know it's something where you realize that you are experiencing it um, but it's not necessarily a place that you can always look at and say generally this is a happy day or generally you can say that um, but that's more of an attitude so if you're if you're talking about a mood though it's usually a little bit more of a transition or a little bit more of a transitory type of thing. Um, here, though, you're seeing a tendency toward that mood, a greater tendency toward that mood. It is a shift in, in kind of overall attitude. So it's somebody who's more likely to see something as a positive day. I was just saying I wanted this back. So um, I guess it didn't want it in that order because there's a matter of unhooking themselves from this thing that has most recently taken over so we saw that they've got they've got some kind of serious devil energy that they're dealing with we've seen the card come out several times here recently and a lot tons of times yesterday um has that energy of maybe uh, my example was maybe drinking too much there was maybe some overthinking or something that is otherwise controlling them um such that they can't seem to get away from it they have decided to take it on that's the thing they want to go toe to toe with that i was mentioning earlier but they don't necessarily feel ready for this and they're not necessarily ready for this but i see them beating it um here's the thing we saw them beating it in yesterday's reading too it was just like not the biggest thing that came out <laughs> it's okay they're going to be successful but look at all this stuff that happens in the meantime you know it's the stuff in the meantime that I was saying it might be good to go back and look at that um extended but in the um in the end they will ultimately find a way through this devil energy the thing to note is that when one devil energy is released, the next biggest one just comes in to take its place. It's like I was talking about, um, I do operation. I'm, I'm like a head of operations and a strategy person at work. 
And one of the things that I've historically done sometimes is throughput planning. So it's like figuring out how a process is going to work. So you have a bottleneck in the process somewhere, that place where it's the, got that tight spot. And you resolve it, and what emerges is here's the next tightest spot. Maybe that's over here, and now you resolve that, and you're constantly resolving making things a little bit better, right? And so this is that sort of thing where they have a an issue that is controlling them, which ultimately is a type of energy they are bringing. But that's not important right now. It's <laughs> They're going to have uh, something that the shackles that fall off. We've already seen this happen. The shackles fall off and then something else kind of comes in to take its place. The next biggest thing kind of almost gets bigger in order to take center stage. Um, but they're going to get on top of that also. And we're going to see something else come in to take its place. And much like you, they are going to find themselves much more adept as time goes on at addressing these things. And so even though something always comes in to take its place, the way that they handle it is going to change and improve over time. So they've got this Knight of Cups. Um, what I'm seeing here is sometimes that's a maybe a, a drawing back sort of energy. Um, what I'm seeing here is not so much drawing back, but the energy come the energy kind of changes. So there's a a shift in not necessarily the communication, the frequency of the it could be the frequency. I think it's the tone more than anything else that shifts here. Um, with the Five of Pentacles, though, I think there's so much awareness around the fact that they are shifting that they may even begin to self-correct. Um, they're making a lot of progress because this is all happening during um, the course of June or not. I mean, it could be still their course correcting. It could be still happening during the course of June or. Um, like it could be as we, as we move into July, it could still be occurring. I'm not saying like as soon as we flip the calendar, it's going to, we're going to be done with this energy. Like it, it flows, but this is course correction right here. This is course correction and this is success and this is stability and this is confidence. Um, but we only need these two. <laughs> the rest of these are honorable mentions. So we've got a course correction with the ace of wands. We've got a success with the six of wands, which I was just talking about. So they're going to have success yet within this energy. So I feel like that starts to unfold as we get closer to this summer solstice. Um, but I don't know that it is done unfolding at that point. I almost feel like it maybe takes a little bit longer and this may not be just a turn the page type of situation. It may be something that takes a little bit of time to sort of develop. Um, but I feel really good about its development across the course of the month of June. So this is a course correction, even after this clear self-destructive sort of behavior that we've been seeing. So very positive um, sort of shift as we go toward July. I'm curious to understand what how that materializes and what you need to look for. I think that's what we're going to do when we get into this extended. What does it mean? What do you need to look for as this person, as, as the changes are starting to happen? Because you've been instructed that as this person comes to you and they are going to do so in an unhealed way to, to be gentle, and that's going to create a change in them. Um, this feels like across the time frame of that change and so understanding maybe a little bit more about that and this course correction too um, I think that's what we're going to look into when we get into the extended because the question is always how does this impact you um, so let's look into how this impacts you before we do let's look into the energy of you so what do you need to be focused on as you move into the back half of June um, and that is relevant to what you've seen in these readings and relevant to the the rest of the meditation so this is the same question that we always ask we've got the nine of cups in the reverse and this is not even a this is the first time you've gotten this card in this position so this is about paying attention um you may not be able to correct everything that you don't like in this energy but pay attention to it because this is going to help you to understand a little bit more about what you need to do. Yes, you're not ready to make the correction, but you're ready to start building a plan um, that's going to better prepare you for making a correction that will overall improve your experience. You have the lovers, um, or the Corona Borealis, which in this case is, um, when in this deck, it's the equivalent of the lovers card. So the Corona Borealis card is a card of partnership and a bond. It is not necessarily 
this bond over here, but it's going to impact your ability to manage this bond. So maybe even as you are experiencing things with this person, this bond over here even is impacting you. And this could be even with a different soulmate or with somebody in your family, somebody that's a close friend who's helping you to move through this, even if only in spirit. So um, it could be you've got somebody that's a, a close relative who has passed, but that they're, they help to inspire you and guide you. Um, and that bond that you have with that person is helping to change things here, or it could be a new soulmate coming in. So it's going to vary um, for different people, but there's something here that's an energy, an energy of support that kind of helps you along. So we got a couple that I found here. Um, Eight of Swords in the reverse. One of the first ones to come up is the Eight of Swords in the reverse, and then we've also got the Princess of Wands. Okay, yeah, there's, there's a, this is a perception. It's an honorable mention. I'm going to keep it just for a second. I don't think it's supposed to get laid down as part of the reading, though. Um, okay, so we have the Eight of Swords here in the reverse talking about when you start getting up in your head and you start noticing that you have this tendency toward the overthinking, this is going to be something that suddenly blows up on you. You've heard about this. When this happens, step back, take the moment. It may make you a little bit uh, pensive or sad for a little while, may change your happiness, your attitude. That is going to be temporary. There may also be, and this is our honorable mention card, there may also be some impression of something that you should have done that you didn't set into motion. Um, I would not worry about that because like most things, this is something that you could, you should be able to roll with it and um, make your adjustments on the fly. So if there's something that needs to be done, you'll be able to do it. It's not too late for whatever you feel like should have been set into motion. Might have been more convenient, but not, um, not something that's going to be stopped. So here we have the death card in the reverse. Death card in the reverse. You got to watch out for things that you're stopping. This is the danger of... This overthinking is you may not be allowing yourself to move forward with something that would actually be a very positive step. Okay. A couple of them fall face down. We have the Eight of Pentacles in the reverse. A place where you've determined that you are going to need more work on something. That could be something very small. I feel like that's something very small, but it's going to be very satisfying to you when you figure out how to do it. So um, it's something that you have to resolve or something that you have to fix. And I'll give you an example. It's a silly example, but um, it'll give you an idea of how much it actually impacts you in your life, which is some. Okay, so um, you guys know, a lot of you know, I play the clarinet. I started playing a little over a year ago. Um, I'm way older than your average first clarinet player, um, like first time clarinet player. I am not good at this yet. I have come a long way in a short time, but I'm not a good clarinetist yet. Um, when I perform, which I've had very limited experiences to perform, I've discovered here are the things that happen to me before I go on the stage, like physical, I, my fingers have a hard time moving. I get a little bit, um, clenched up in my throat. And so I discovered as I go through performances and I've had limited experience with that, these are the things I haven't mastered, and they're small things, but every time I go on the stage, I master something. So the first time I went on, I discovered all these things that happened to me. The second time, I was able to master a couple of those things. I was able to breathe through a couple of those things, um, but like your throat clenching up. I was able to breathe through that part. That's the sort of issue you've got here is like the throat clenching up thing. It's not a huge part of your life. But when you breathe through it and you resolve it, all of a sudden, you now realize not only can you handle it in that context, but you now know you can handle this in any context. And so that's kind of, it's very transferable. So the impact on your life is negligible at best when you look at it as an individual success. But when you look at it in general, it is something that has an overall impact on your life. So like I said, it's kind of small, it's a small one, it's silly, but it has an overall impact on my life. I know I can be successful because I was able to resolve it in that context. And it's a safe place to resolve it. So it's kind of a nice thing. Look for that. Look for something that is relatively small and you're like, should I take the time? Yeah, take the time to resolve it. It's going to help you in the future um, with this. So with the Five of Swords in the reverse, that is a card of anxiety and consternation. It's internal struggle, and it's something that you don't need to really engage too much in. So again, we saw that Eight of Swords coming out with the overthinking. Um, this is basically... 
the next step, this is that overthinking as after it's gotten a little bit out of control. Um, you are going to be quite capable of mastering getting on top of the thing that you need to master because of your ability to identify what's happening and your your ability to identify a solution. So in my case, the ability to say, hey, my throat's clenching up and my subsequent ability to say, let's try some breathing on that, see if it works. Um, so it's the judgment card in the reverse and the judgment card in the reverse saying basically something isn't holding up, something you're doing isn't satisfactory to you and you have the strength and the confidence to go ahead and move forward and make the change. So um, I'm using a nice, safe, silly example, but it can, for you, could be very different. It could be something very different. Um, and this is the second time that I've had a card fall face down that I feel like I need to take. So let's see what this is. Okay, we have the Eight of Cups in the reverse. Oh, you're, you're getting in the way of something for yourself. This is an opportunity to step out of your own way. There's something here. So when your person gets the Eight of Cups in the reverse, sometimes it's about them not passing or not... Um, going on that quest to find the thing that's going to make them the happiest. This is that. This is continuing vigilance to make sure that you understand what it is that truly makes you happy. And keep in mind here that you did get this Nine of Cups um, coming out in the reverse. So the Nine of Cups in the reverse was talking about being aware of things that do not make you happy. And this Eight of Cups says there you can be more vigilant about finding that Ninth Cup, about finding that thing that's going to make you happy. So just a little bit of advice to you there. It is constructive it's very lighthearted sort of um, advice. A lot of the advice that you get feels very lighthearted and like, hey, you're doing great, but here are some things that you can do to add to it so or to enhance it. Um, so absolutely take it that way. Please don't take it too hard because that just slows you down as far as being able to incorporate the answers. Um, this is meant to absolutely, I can tell you, in a lighthearted way. Um, you have a lot of positivity and this is, feels like fine tuning um, very much, whereas you've got some deeper kinds of issues that your person is experiencing. And not to say you don't have deep issues, but the uh, what you're being asked to focus on here towards the back half of the month of June is more fine tuning oriented type stuff. Um, so we'll go ahead and stop for now. We're going to go ahead and go into the extensive, extended. I'm super curious to understand about this directional change that has them moving away from the self-destructive behavior and more toward the satisfactory um, because there's a lot of moving away from this thing that holds them back and that kind of keeps them down and keeps them mired in this fantasy energy as well so I see positivity as they're moving out of the month of June um, but not to say that this time has been wasted this has been very useful so I'm going to go ahead and go into the extended then if you want to see what's happening with their, um, what, how it's going to impact you, how their actions are likely to impact you as they turn this corner and kind of move away from the self-destructive behavior. That's what we're going to take a look at. Um, so hopefully I'll see you there. The link is down below. Otherwise, I'll see you again in the next reading.